Hey guys, JH. Welcome to the Inferno. Guys, it's just so hot here today. So hot. I suppose it wouldn't be a JH practice too if uh, we didn't have a weather forecast, would it really? Okay guys, today is a video that I think maybe should have been coming earlier. And I'm going to call title today's video Channel Lock. It's not as hard as we we're making it out to be. Guys, at the end of the day, Channel Lock, the departure from Channel Lock, departure to Channel Lock from conventional golf is 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 a couple of things. Major things. Okay, the, the first major thing is the ball position. Ball position is move to the back foot as opposed to center of the body forward in a conventional golf swing. Normal golf swing is played from there and it's played within that that tolerance there. It can be up on the left toe in, in, in line with the left toe back on the left heel or even in center of the stance. So there's a lot of there's a lot of tolerance there and you don't want that. With channel lock we eliminate that tolerance because the only tolerance we've got is basically one big toe um, tolerance, the width of a big toe. We should endeavor to get the ball in line with the, the trail big toe there. That's what we should try and do. Now the other thing that we should, should do or think about is that we want to be swinging the club beside our body as opposed to in front of the body. This is all stuff we've heard before guys. But I have to go over it to get to the next point. We want to feel that we're swinging the club beside the body. Why do we want to feel that? Sorry guys, just check this. Just check the audio. Hey guys, just checking the audio. Yep, that seems okay. Yeah, sorry. I've had so much trouble with the audio lately, guys. Okay. Um, yeah, why do we want to feel that? Why do we want to feel the club being swung here? Because that will get us in this channel that we have beside the body. Why do we want to be in a channel? To be in a channel, it propagates an into-out golf swing. When we're swinging in front of the body, it'll propagate a straight down the line swing for a good player or an outside to in swing for a not so good player. But if you can get the ball back and feel that you're actually swinging the club beside the body, as opposed to in front of the body, it will get you in the channel. And if you're in the channel, guys, you'll be swinging into out. And if you're swinging into out, the ball will always start in that direction there. It'll always start for right-handed to the right of the target line. How, how much that is, is all relative to your own angles. Now we have to, we have to, all we've got to do, guys, is place the ball back there, set up so that in the downswing, that we're going to swing the club this way, into out. Now the easiest way to do that is to have closed shoulders when you're coming into the ball. Now that's really all you have to do is you have your shoulders closed coming into the ball from a back foot ball position, you're swinging into out. Elementary dear Watson, you can't do anything else. The geometry dictates you must do that. You can't do anything else. You cannot do anything else. So that's what we have to do. And that's how simplistic the thinking is. The thinking is no more difficult than that. We have to feel that we're swinging beside the body and have our shoulders closed. Now if we're going to be hitting into out, clearly the ball is going to be starting to the right of the target. Now the objective of golf is to get the ball to go to the target. So the fact that we know that the ball is going to start to the right of the target, all we've got to do, and we know that every time, all we've got to do is hit some practice shots and then determine how far left we have to feel for a right-hander, how far left we have to feel as a right-hander to get the ball going to the target, even though we're still hitting into out across the target line. So we'll end up pushing the ball to the target. Now that just comes about by practice, guys, and you working out what degree of geometry you need for your tangential attack on the ball. It's as simple as that. You just keep moving around to the left till the ball goes to the target. You don't change anything else for a right-hander. 
and if the ball starts directly at the target and that's great then you've got the right amount of club face closure on the ball at impact if it starts towards the target and then moves left hard you've got too much closure on the face if it starts out towards the target and just drifts away you haven't got enough face closure on the on the club at impact now that's again something you've just got to trial and error now how do we get our shoulders closed at impact now I do something called a, called a back cock or a pre cock in that I get here to to precursor in my mind the feeling of keeping my shoulders closed now I have that feeling just excuse me guys because it's so hot even now just standing there for a couple of minutes my hands are sweating and the grip is wet just extraordinary so I go into this back cock thing I get here a little bit and I sit into my trail side you've got to propagate sitting into your trail side because sitting into the trail side will give you a thing what we call secondary tilt the secondary tilt is that this is primary tilt here whatever amount of spine tilt you've got at address and secondary tilt is what spine at, <coughs> spine inclination you've got at impact and good players increase the spine impact as uh, spine inclination at impact it's called secondary tilt because it's a secondary application of spine tilt more spine tilt and it usually happens at impact now the way that we get our shoulders closed for the for the end to out thing is to have more secondary tilt on the body coming in nothing else other than secondary tilt now secondary tilt is what secondary tilt is that guys it's feeling like we're back here with that upper body we feel like we're back there the upper body is back there but the club is firing out so the mass and the energy and the velocity going out there is being balanced by this mass staying back here we've got all that force there wanting to drag us forward so we have to counterbalance that and counterbalancing that we just keep the mass back here in secondary tilt now if you don't want to pre-cock your shoulders you can play channel lock from a perfectly almost square shoulder alignment you won't have a perfectly square shoulder alignment because the ball is back in the stance now as soon as you go back in the stance you're going to have a little bit of closure on the shoulders that'll just happen because of where the ball position is that's just that's just going to happen now what what one of the guys was was concerned about about channel lock being shown as 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 hitting the ball with square shoulders well you can do that you can you the shoulders will never be square with channel lock with the ball back in off the back foot but they will not be as angled to to the right as mine are because I back cock mine but you don't have to back cock you can do like as Matt Gray does and as Bill Phillips does at MMI Golf they don't back cock hardly at all but they still hit into out because their ball flight is a push draw and they couldn't get that unless they had that geometry so you can actually you can actually have have you know almost square shoulders here and what's going to happen guys <laughs> as I start my backswing <coughs> I'm going to be in that pre-cock position now all I'm doing is I'm just getting into my backswing so I'm not doing anything different to Matt Gray other than I'm starting my backswing Matt Gray hasn't started his backswing he's got his shoulders you know like a little bit shut but not not dead square but not as closed as mine he's just not into his backswing I am I'm into my backswing but if I wasn't into my backswing I'd be here I'd be here like that like Matt Gray is now I, I can take it back here apply secondary tilt fire it into out stay in the secondary tilt and the ball starts exactly the same as it does now uh, with the pre-turn or pre-cock that I have in my shoulders I mean it does that guys I'll show you I'll, I'll hit I'll hit I'll set up like Matt Gray sets up and I don't say that everybody has to set up as back cocked as I do I do it because I'm older and it helps me get going and, and get more rotation in my backswing it just helps me get a little bit more turn but if you're younger 
and you've got a bit of flexibility, you don't have to. You don't have to be into your turn. Look, I'm here. I'm basically where, where Matt Gray is here. But as I take it back, I get into that position there. Now that's exactly the same setup that Matt Gray has at MMI Golf. He's, he's almost square on with his shoulders. But as he goes back, and because he's, he's, he's pivoting into his trail side, and, he, and he's in the channel and the ball's back there, he's going to be closed when he hits it. And he is closed, because he starts everything to the right. So, so guys, you don't have to, you know, you don't have to concoct yourself at address. You don't have to get into this position here. I get in there because I've always done that from day one. But you can get, you can get here like that. Just, just that's just basically square on. It makes no difference. The angle of attack is is predetermined by by the ball being off the back foot at address and the secondary tilt that you apply on the downswing. And of course, how I start my downswing. And for me, I get the club head moving quickly, but I also just drop my arms that way. My, 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 uh, my forearms just roll that way, guys. So that gets me going inside anyway. So look, I'm setting up essentially exactly the same as Matt Gray would set up. Now Matt Gray plays the ball off his trail foot. Now one of one of the guys and and, and the guy Louis, you know who you are. It's Louis. Uh, Louis Louis is concerned that Matt is playing the ball from the middle of his stance and from a square stance. Well, Louis is not because he does exactly what I do. He comes up here and he measures the ball off, which is what you know basically I've indoctrinated him to do and 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 anybody else. You come up here and and then he just goes into his set here. Now he pulls his foot back like I do. Now if you pull your foot back it looks like the ball's going forward and that's an optical aberration. That's not reality. I pull my foot back and it looks like the ball goes forward and I see myself on the camera and even buddies of mine they say, Jay, actually, the ball's going, so the ball's not going up. It hasn't moved because I'm here. Here. And then I just pull it back there and Matt does the same. But Matt doesn't have as much uh, back cock as I have. So the whole point of this, guys, is you can play from essentially a square shoulder alignment. As long as the ball is back, as long as you take it back and you endeavour to swing in the channel and you stay in the channel on the downswing, keep the shoulders closed and maintain secondary tilt. Like that. I, I mean, that's... I mean, I'm doing it here, right now. And, and the ball flight here, as opposed to me being here normally, th this is essentially where, where, how, how Matt, Matt Gray takes it back. And oh, guys, I can't hit it any better than that. That's just exactly the same ball flight that I get with my with my back cock. What I feel in that, to be absolutely uh, truthful, I don't feel that I can get as much coil out of that because I'm not as predisposed into the turn into the backswing. But but essentially, that's 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 a, this is about probably where Billy Phillips is. And guys, bear in mind that I get in here with the gunslinger. So I get my arms closer to my body anyway, which is going to pull my trail shoulder back and down. But if, you, if you're someone that doesn't have your trail shoulder back and down, and your arms closer to your body like I do, then you don't have to have as... Well, you won't create as much back cock look that, as I've got. So look, here I am here, guys. That, that, that's dead square. That's dead, dead square on. Here, got about 10 degrees closure here. And it's just, it's exactly the same ball flight. It doesn't vary. Exactly the same ball flight. If anything, <laughs> it actually hits the ball, I think a little bit, for me, a little bit more solid. Just takes, I, I get with normal channel lock, I'm probably about, I don't know, six or eight degrees into out at impact. Matt Gray's probably about four or five. Um, I have about four degrees closure on my club face, which picks me up about a three yard draw. 
when I don't have my shoulders back cocked, because I load later, my mass distribution is different, and my download is different, so I don't have quite as much into out. I probably only got five or six degrees. So my draw is almost, you know, non-existent. It's only a couple of yards. But here we are, guys. This is me normally here. It's exactly the same flight. No difference in that flight to, uh, to being square on. I'll just do one more of my own. Ball doesn't move. Okay, now I'll do one with uh, with square on. Yeah. Well, I got to tell you, <laughs> I actually prefer the square on because it takes half of my draw out. I only get you know probably one and a half, two yard draw. It's hardly anything at all. And Bill Phillips says that Matt doesn't draw the ball very much. He just hits a nice, you know, like a rifling type draw. So guys, uh, you don't, don't get bent and twisted about, about having to get into a, a shutdown, lockdown position at address, because you don't have to. You can be square on. You can be square on. This is, this is square on. This is square on. That's such a pretty shot. That's dead straight. <laughs> well, one yard, one yard start to the right. One yard start to the right. It's hard to hang on, guys. Especially when you're trying to propagate a soft grip. Okay, now I'm going to be square on again. But look, the ball's there. I might move my foot back a bit. All those balls are, you know, 15 foot circle stuff. They just don't move. Come on, full swing. Full swing from square on. And the contact is so, is so clean. Okay, a lot of secondary tilt. So guys, you know, you, you can play square on. Square on, square on. Warming up a bit. That's a good shot. I, I've got to tell you, I, I don't turn as easy from square on, but that's only because I'm old. Matt's not 50 yet. So I've got 27 years on him. But I'll work that. Uh, I'll work that turn in. I'll try and put a bit more turn into this. Yeah. Wow. And that's from square on, guys. That's from square on. So you can be square on. But you've just got to maintain the close shoulders and impact secondary tilt. That was a beautiful shot. Just, just hitting a few shots, guys, to show you. Now I'll go back to my, my set. This is how I set up. Exactly the same ball fly. Backswing feels a bit easier, that's all. The ball flight's identical. Well, this one, the square, mine has a tiny little bit more draw. That's as good as it gets right there. Wow. If you can hear the contact guys, it's so clean. That's the good thing about channel lock. Channel lock is very shallow golf swing. And yeah, you don't chunk it. And you don't you don't take massive divots. You just clean it. 
So I say, when I hit those shots off the green, it's um, I, I love tight lies. Tighter lie, the better for this golf swing. Okay, full swing with square on. See, the hands are back here, guys. Well, if I had to say what are the best shots out of my preset or, or square on, I'd have to say the square on because the contact is better. Contact's absolutely better. It's, my contact's pretty good with channel lock anyway, but I reckon that's 5% up. And that's square on. Now this is square on. Ball doesn't move. The 40 inch driver guys, a lot of development going on with it. Can't say too much about that, but suffice to say, don't go cutting your driver down to 40 inch with you know with your new shaft or whatever. You've got an old club, cut it down, try it. Matt, Matt and uh, Bill Phillips have cut an M2 driver down and it's working great. There's is 41 and a half, this is 40. You watch this guys, from a square on. Square on. 40 inch driver, square on. Now guys, first driver of the day, and Scouts Honor, that is just blitzed. Absolutely blitzed. Just goes so straight. There's a marker out here, and our old Ford Fairlane. And it's like a 15 yard corridor. That's the fairway I hit down. But it goes within two or three yards of the center. Most of the time it basically almost goes down the center. But it's never out of that corridor. It can't get out of that corridor. And this is square on guys, dead square on. I love the uh, I love the short driver I can never go back to a conventional driver okay I'm warmed up with the driver I'm gonna I'm gonna let this now I said the other day that the advantage of this short club is that you can hit it hard because your balance doesn't get compromised I've always my whole life only hit probably 80 percent with the driver because I always felt out of balance with a long club this I can go after at 110 I'll go after this 110 percent And why would I do that? Because Jack Nicholas and Tom Watson told me something face to face once. They said, don't pull the driver unless you're going to hit it as hard as you can because it's maximum distance golf club. Why would you pull it if you're not going to hammer it? They both said, Mo Norman said the same. He says, maximum distance, hit it as hard as you can. Sam Sneed was the only guy that said he never hit his driver full out, but he never hit anything full out. But, no, but, but Nicholas and Watson, and you watch Bubba, Bubba hits at 125%. But it's interesting now, I was looking at his averages the other day. He's not even in the top 20 or so for distance. Everybody's ripping it miles past him and their club head speed's way up. Bubba's lost a lot of club head speed for some reason. Don't know why. Watch this guys, I'll hammer this. I don't know what that looks like. Does that look like I'm hitting it harder? Certainly feels like it. Certainly feels like it. I can't hit it better than that. And this is an old driver. This is a driver that's probably six, six years old. It's not the latest technology. Or the latest shaft. It's a good club, it's a tour issue golf club. But, um, yeah, and I'm fiddling with the weights and I've got a couple of things going, which I don't want to get you guys going off on that tangent. Watch this, this 110% hit with the driver. 
what do I do to hit 110%? I just try and make the backswing fuller and a bit longer. And I, and I back the grip down to, you know, like a three. See guys, even with the driver now, I can, when I think about it, when I concentrate, I can keep the trail foot down. And I'm very level. Mr. Rex hits down, he takes the tee out of the ground. He takes, he brushes the ground after he hits it because he's so steep. He's probably four or five degrees down. I'm, I'm probably about eight up. <laughs> or, or I'm probably level now. I'm, I'm probably about, you know, only two up. But I'm not down. I've never tried to hit down on the ball. I'll just try one just for fun. I've never tried to hit down on This will be interesting. Wow. Wow, that is an entirely different feel. That's entirely different, guys. I'm actually trying to, I'm trying to hit into out, but down. I'm trying to put the club on the ground out here. That's interesting. Wow, that's very interesting. I've never done that. Mr. X is always trying to get me to do it, but I've never, never tried it. I'd have to tee the ball down if I was going to do it, but I'll actually hit down on it. Square on. It's definitely a different feeling. I'll bring some impact tape tomorrow and I'll show you where these hits are guys. They're just they're just dead center. Matt Matt Gray the other day was showing you, you know, how his were dead center. And with these modern drivers guys, the sweet spot is always high. High on the face. Sometimes they'll be high on the face heel. Uh, but it's not dead center, strangely enough. When you've got a deep face, it's not dead center, it's up high. Okay, last shot. Square on. Hit this 110%. Well, there's 110% effort there. Wow. My, that's a really good shot. I just hit a proper ball, it's a tightless ball. The range balls, you know, don't go anywhere near as far as the proper balls. I'll just see the difference. I can see where that range ball is down there. Oh, my goodness. What's interesting is that the spin rate on those balls is different to a normal golf ball. And this club has got a different spin rate now. When I hit with those balls, the ball goes flatter. When I hit with a, a proper golf ball, it goes high and stays in the air so much longer. I mean, that was crazy how long that stood in the air, stayed in the air. Okay, one more shot. See if I can hit 120% with the driver. See what the breakdown is. How hard can I hit it without getting out of balance and, and flubbing a shot? Okay, I'm warmed up. <laughs> you want to be warmed up here in the inferno. That's as hard as I can hit it. Wow. And that's 20 yards longer. We all talk about hitting 20 yards longer. That doesn't happen very often, but that was 20 yards longer. It can carry 20 yards further, but it carried probably another 10 or 12. And ran probably another 8. I can see where that is down there. Okay, last shot. Trying to hit it really hard, James. Oh, wow! Well, I've just run that end of the fence down there. I never get anywhere near that fence. Especially with a crosshead wind. Just ran that end of the fence. I just hit one more because I want to have a look at this on video myself. Because I'm hitting that hard, guys. I'm really going after that. And what happens when I hit it harder? It goes straighter and it goes further. Come on. See where my hands are here, guys? Look.
Well, that's the shot of the day right there. Short clubs, guys. I'll be doing more on that. But I just had to do that video today, guys. Let's not make channel lock harder than it has to be. Really doesn't have to be that hard. Going to come back and do a little pitching video. Um, again, with, with channel lock and the benefits of it.